Amazon KDP is changing. This is exactly how you succeed in 2023. What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Sean and I've built and sold a seven figure Amazon KDP business and now I'm building my second KDP account. So if you want no BS publishing advice from someone who's actually doing it, then make sure to subscribe. And if you want a completely free training on how I built a seven figure publishing business, then the link to the free training is in the description below. All right, so Amazon KDP, when I started in 2016 to Amazon KDP in 2023 right now is very different. And in this video, I wanna show you how it changed and what you should do to adapt to the change and succeed in 2023 and beyond. So the first change that I definitely noticed is the flood of low content books in the past couple of years. And now that is transitioning into the flood of AI written books. So what happens whenever there is a flood of, you know, essentially spam content uh, that is flooding into Amazon, it just really forces Amazon to become more strict in terms of the content guidelines. People are literally uploading tens or even hundreds of books a day. And many people use the exact same interior and all they do is change the covers, right? So you can have like 10 different books that looks like a different book because the title is different, the cover is different, but when people buy it, the interior is the exact same. And this becomes an issue because, you know, it causes a very poor customer experience, right? Customers thinking it's a new book, they buy it and it's the exact same book as the one they already bought in the past. So that is exactly what caused Amazon to crack down on this and because of that Amazon is a lot more strict in terms of you know what kind of content we can upload compared to a couple years ago and it makes sense because Amazon doesn't want the marketplace to be flooded with low quality spam so what should you do well you want to do the exact opposite of what everybody else is doing so if everybody's just pumping out a bunch of you know low quality books that are basically copy pasted then you want to do the opposite you want to slow down and focus on making a actually good high quality book most people will put in the bare minimum so if you on the other hand actually take the time to learn about your customers make good covers make good interiors and really try to serve the customer and you know solve their pain point then your book will stand out so focus on quality over quantity now if you don't know how to make a high quality book cover or high quality interior or maybe you don't know how to write a book well, then what you can do is hire other professionals who specialize in that uh, very easily. So you can use sites like Upwork or Fiverr. So there are services like the Urban Writers that can write books for you. This is essentially a ghostwriting company. And Fiverr is also a great option for, you know, any process uh, within the publishing business. So pretty much any task in your publishing business, such as creating your book cover, outline, writing the description, you know, even creating a low content or medium content book interior like this gig will do all of that for you uh, just for $35 and it comes with book covers. So outsourcing it to a professional like this is an easy way to get high quality books. So the second change that I noticed over the years is the change from a SEO based algorithm to a performance based algorithm. So Amazon used to rank your book in whatever keyword uh, that was in the title for your book and this still happens but the ranking is a lot weaker now. So just publishing the book and forgetting about it is not as effective now. Instead, you should be getting sales and reviews right after the book is published to prove to Amazon that your book is performing well and they should be placing your book on page one and showing it to more people. So that is the difference uh, from SEO base, simply ranking because you have the keyword in the title to now performance base, actually performing and showing that your book performs and you know having Amazon rank you for that. So why did this happen? Well, it kind of goes back to the same issue of people just spamming low quality books and flooding the marketplace. Uh, with the SEO based ranking, you know, it was very easy for these low quality books to show up on page one just by stuffing keywords. And a lot of people were buying those books and having a lot of negative experiences, right? So that is why this is, you know, Amazon's way of weeding out the bad quality books, because if you're getting a lot of sales and if you're getting a lot of reviews, then that just shows Amazon that your book is actually good. It's in demand and people are happy with the content. So that's exactly why Amazon switched to it performance based ranking. So essentially Amazon wants to see proof that your book is good before they actually show it to more people. So what should you do to kind of adapt to this? Well, you know, once again, you don't want to just upload and forget. After the book is published, try to get as much sales as you can by marketing the book. So essentially you want to go through a proper launch process. 
and aim for as many review as possible during your launch. If you're doing low content books, 10 is a great place to start. So 10 reviews. If you're doing high content book, you want to aim for at least 30 reviews uh, during your launch process. At least for me, I found that that is a good benchmark. You also want to run ads, specifically Amazon ads, because in my opinion, that is the most cost effective and most efficient way to get more sales. And you also want to price your book cheaper than the normal price during your launch. This is so you can get as many sales as possible. So a popular launch strategy that all top publishers use is they price their Kindle book at 99 cent, which is the cheapest that you can price it at, and they run ads to it, get as many sales as you can, and over time, you know, you get more reviews and you will rank higher and higher in the algorithm. And after a little while, you can price your book to full price. So now you can start, you know, making actual profit. But in the beginning, you might take a little loss, but it's more of an investment into future, you know, profit because now you have a lot more reviews and a much better ranking. Uh, so if you don't have an ebook version, you can do the same thing with a paperback. It's actually a great idea to do the same thing, but with a paperback. So, you know, with paperback, you cannot price it at 99 cents, but you can price it a lot lower. So if you're doing low content, it could be $5.99. $7.99, even with a high content book, you can price it at $9.99 and then run as to it. And once again, you can rank the book and then later on, you can change it back to full price. So the third change that I definitely see, and I'm sure you see as well, and it's something that is pretty recent, but this is the rise of AI. So from ChatGPT to MidJourney and many other tools, a lot of the publishing process is being replaced by an AI. AI is here to stay and it is slowly integrating itself as part of the publishing process. Now, if you are a writer or if you're an illustrator, you probably should be a little scared because I think at the moment, it's not good enough to replace a writer or you know replace an illustrator, but I believe in the future, it'll be smart enough to do so. I don't know how soon it will be, but I believe it'll come. But if you are a publisher or an entrepreneur like me, then this is literally the best thing ever because now you can create books faster and cheaper than ever before. Now that is the benefit of this change, but there's also the con of this, uh, which is that, you know, obviously people will start flooding Amazon with AI generated content. So Amazon will have to make a change again. So what's probably going to happen is Amazon will implement a AI detection system where they can detect uh, what content or what books are written by an AI and which books are, you know, written by an actual human. So what should you do? Well, for the first thing is you want to embrace the change because, you know, AI is once again here to stay. So learn how to use AI properly and efficiently to your advantage. If you know how to use AI, you can create books books way faster, way more efficiently at a lower cost and without sacrificing quality. You also want to use AI as a tool, not as a replacement. Now, at the moment, AI is not good enough to replace an actual human writing. So, you know, you definitely don't want to replace the writing. Uh, you want to use it as more of an idea generation tool and uh, different ways rather than straight up just, you know, having it write the book for you. The reason why it's not good enough to replace uh, human writing is because AI content often lacks the personality. And, you know, usually what makes a good book is not just facts and information, but it's the personality that comes behind the writing. When people buy books, they're usually looking for information as well as the author's personal experience and their stories on how they used that information, you know, in their own life. So that's exactly what AI cannot uh, create at the moment. So that is something that you want to make sure to add in your book. So for now, use AI as a tool to help you write the book, but never take the content as is. You also want to make sure to rewrite the content from ChatGPT if you do generate something from there, because I am pretty sure that Amazon will be able to detect if the content was AI written or not. There are already tools like originality.ai that can detect if the content is written by an AI or not. You can see that, you know, this was purely chat GPT generated content. I ran it through originality and it came back as 100% AI. So I'm not going to go into the tutorial of this because I have a bunch of videos in the past that you guys can check out on me, you know, giving you a tutorial of this tool. But the point is you always want to rewrite the content that you generate from chat GPT or any other AI tool. So these were the major changes that I definitely observed over the years and publishing is not dying, but it's definitely changing 
changing. Every single business evolves over time and publishing is no different. I still think it is one of the best businesses out there and these are actually good changes if you know how to deal with it. It's actually a good thing that they're cracking down on low quality spam content. It's actually a good thing that they are you know, changing to performance based ranking. Right? It really rewards you for creating high quality books and you know, building this business uh, the correct way and you know, more so long term strategies than short term strategies like spamming a bunch of books. So that is it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do want to check out the completely free training on how I built a seven figure publishing business, then the link to that is in the description below, as well as all the tools and resources that I recommend for your publishing business. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.